Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's keep our, our kids in prayer. Keep our kids in prayer. Amen. So uh, the next slide. So no other name is what I'm preaching about. Last uh, Sunday, uh, it was Pentecost, so I preached out of uh, the second chapter of Acts. Touched on the first, uh, the coming of the Comforter. The Holy Spirit of God fell on these 120 uh, disciples that were in the upper room praying and worshiping God. They spoke in tongues. They spilled out into the, 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 the byways and the highways there, if you will. And the people came and they said, what is this? And that's when Peter, you know, they say, these people are drunk. They're, they're crazy. They're out of the mind. Peter, Peter got up, told them a story about the Old Testament, how the prophets were going to prophesize about this what was coming. And you crucified Jesus Christ, the Lord himself, and the people were convicted. And baptism, salvation through Jesus Christ, repentance came to them. And the Holy Spirit just worshiped, you know, just there were like 3,000 baptized that day. Powerful things happened, amen, because the power of the Holy Spirit had come upon them. And that was a life changer. From then on, this new, this new beginning in Christ is actually the last days, if you will. The days are, are cutting short before the Lord's coming. And that's why he empowered us with the Holy Spirit of God to be witnesses, martyrs for him. So in chapter 3, um, I'll, I'll touch on that one here, but I'm going to read 4 and I'm going to go back to 3. So if you'll stand with me, I'm going to read Acts 4, verses 5 through 12. And then I'll touch on the first few four verses and chapter 3 on that. So Acts chapter 4, verses 5 through 12. Ready? All right. So the next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all the members of the high priest family. After they had Peter and John stand before them, they asked them the question, by what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and people and elders, if we are being examined today about a good deed done to this disabled man, by what means he was healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified and whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you healthy. This Jesus is a stone rejected by you builders, which has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to people, and we must be saved by it. Amen. Lord, we love you. Speak to us today, God. Prepare my heart, Father, once again to preach your word. Touch my heart. Touch their hearts, God. All of us here together, God, that we'd be one accord under heaven, Father, so that we would be a witness of you, Lord, and the power of your resurrection, the power of the Holy Spirit that comes upon us, Father, and gives us healing, God, gives us the encouragement, God, gives us the boldness to preach and to teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. And you may be seated. So chapter 4 continues the story of chapter 3. In chapter 3, Peter and John were going up to the temple to worship at the time of the evening sacrifice about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. As they were passing through the beautiful gate, they met a crippled man who had been laying there since, so that he might beg for pennies from the people who were headed to the temple for worship. Instead of giving this man a few coins and passing right on by, Peter takes his hand and heals him in the name of Jesus. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk, amen? And he did. Praise God, that's what he did. That's the power and the authority they had once they had the Holy Spirit of God, amen? That's what God, the Lord was telling them. I'm preparing you for this, but you've got to go wait for this because something powerful is going to happen to you. And we are Pentecostal people. We are men and women full of the Holy Spirit of God who had that spirit to embolden us to preach and to teach, amen? amen. And God can still do those things. Amen. God can still do those things. So when the people... Who knew this was a lame man? The witnesses that were there, they see this man leaping and jumping and praising God. They ask, you know, what, what's going on? What happened? So Peter takes this opportunity and he preaches about Jesus. And while he was preaching, the, lead, the religious leaders they, they, of the Sanhedrin, they come to the scene and they're kind of check the, they're checking things out. What's going on here? When they hear Peter preaching about Jesus, whom they crucified, they're outraged, they're angry. How dare you preach about Jesus? 
But you know what happened? When they had done that, already another 5,000 people had been saved on that day. So 3,000 just a day or so before, and 5,000, it was amazing what was happening. Amen? The power of God, the hand of God moving amongst the people. And then the temple guards came, and the Sadducees, and they seized Peter and John, and since it's already late, they put him in prison. They put him in jail. And the next day, that's what this is. On the next day, there was a 70-member council, plus a president's high priest who was made up of members of the high priest family, experts of the law, including scribes and Pharisees, and other members of the community. So they, they called them all together. And during their night in jail, Peter and John had to know that they were about to stand before the very group that had come to condemn Jesus just a couple months before that. The same ones that condemned Jesus to the cross. You know, amen? They hung him on a cross, and they, and they tortured him, they beat him, they pierced his side, they condemned him. So these were the same men that they were going to go stand before. These Jesus-named preachers, these Jesus-named people were going to go stand before them. So was history going to repeat themselves? I'm sure they were wondering, okay, is the same thing going to happen to us? There's no way that they were going to get any justice from the same court that had condemned Jesus. If they condemned Jesus, you know, what kind of mercy are they going to have for us? Their fear would be understandable since many of the authorities who had sentenced them were going to be there. We're told in 4, 7, 4, chapter 4, verse 7, by what power or by what name have you done this? That's when it says again, that's what I then Peter, full of the Holy Spirit, preached an anointed sermon, just like he did back, you know, just a, a couple months ago, when, uh, weeks ago, when the, the Holy Spirit came upon them. I mean, the same thing was happening. They're full of the Holy Spirit. And as soon as Peter and John were challenged to explain themselves, he took the offensive. The Bible says, rulers and people, the elders, if we are being examined today, if you're going to be questioning us today about what good we did to this man and by what means he was healed, let it be known to you that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, whom you crucified, by him he's standing healthy before you. And he, again, there's no salvation in no one else. No one else. Nothing else can save us. No matter what, 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 who you th think you go, where you th well, I'm going to go get it here, or I heard about this, I heard about, there's only one, there's only one, one, and that's Jesus Christ that can heal you, he can save you, he can restore you, he can make your life new, he can take you from a broken person and make you whole. Amen? So if any one of us, anyone can, per can put a, 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 a dent in, in, the, in the universe, it was the early church. Now remember, we're, we're, our, our foundation, our faith is on the apostolic faith of the early church. That's where it started. Amen. A lot of things have changed over the years because man has come in with all these councils and things and they made things like changes like that. But we are the people of God of the first church. Amen. Of, 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 of the Acts chapter 2. And that's when the Holy Spirit came. Baptism in Jesus' name. We're, we're just, we're holiness people. We believe in, in, in oneness of God. We believe in the Holy Spirit of God. We believe in salvation through his name and baptism in Jesus' name. That's how the church started. And that's where the power came. Amen. So after the death of Jesus, and it looked like the group would fade away in history, right? Because remember, they dispersed. When that happened, when he died and buried and resurrected, everybody bailed. Peter and everybody, all the disciples were gone. He came back for 40 days, and he, and he looked, sought them, you know, came back, contacted them, taught them a different way, taught them more, prepared them, and then he told them to go wait in Jerusalem so that the Holy Spirit would come upon them. So he came back, and he spoke to them. And then that, what happened was the Holy Spirit of power came over them, and that day, again, the Holy Spirit came. So what, what happened? The disciples had encountered the risen Christ. So after Jesus resurrected, they encountered him. Now they, they, they touched him. They could see him, his glorified, semi-glorified body because he wasn't taken to heaven. So that's why he could come in and show up in places where, where'd he come from? He would walk through a door. He would show up unexpectedly. And it, you know, only a God thing could do that, amen? Only a spiritual thing could do that. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit, the very presence of God in their lives, and that gave them a new power, a new boldness, and a sense of mission, amen? So when you receive the goal, gift of the Holy Spirit, you're empowered, and you know, you can feel that, like just the presence of God is in you, amen? So that's why it's important. If you have not received the gift of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues, seek it, seek it. Now, some people have a hard time because there's a little bit of doubt, and I, I confess, I was one. When I, the first day I was baptized, I felt the presence of God, but it, it scared me. The second time when I had the opportunity, I said, no way. I'm not, if it comes, it comes. And I let myself go. I just, and it was, I'm, I'm sure it was not a pretty sight, but I was with a bunch of men, thank God. But so if other people might think, yeah, but what if they see me cry? So what? What if they see this stuff and that? So what? 
you're having a relationship with the Lord. The Lord is, is, is with you, amen? The power of God is coming over you. And sometimes it's not pretty, sometimes it is. But let it happen, just let yourself go and let God have his way with you. Once you do that, your life is going to be changed. Your life is never going to be the same again. Even in the middle of trials, even in the middle of the darkest times, you know that the joy of the Lord is still in your heart. Amen? The power of God is there. It's the flesh that gets in the way. We have to overcome that. We have to have the mind of Christ. Amen? And how do we get that? By constant prayer and worship and reading the scriptures and coming to, 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 to the to Bible, to, school, to church like this so that we can get the word. Amen? So that's why it's so important. It's so important. You stay in shape if you work out. If you don't work out, you're not, right? So how do you stay in shape spiritually? You come, you worship, you read scripture, amen? You seek God's presence, God's face. So the reason that they were facing the Supreme Court was because the day before, again, he healed that crippled man. So in today's message, the aftermath of that miracle still continues. They grabbed him, they threw him in jail, and then two days again, they asked him again, by what power, what name this is? And they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Then Peter quotes a verse from the Old Testament that these religious leaders, they certainly would recognize. It says, this Jesus is the stone which was rejected by you, the builders which came, became the chief cornerstone. They knew that. If they knew their body, that's all they had was the Old Testament. So that's what they was telling him. Th this stone, Jesus, is this stone that was rejected by you. And now he is the cornerstone. He is the foundation of salvation here. By quoting this first thing, I want you to understand what we're saying about Jesus. This isn't about him merely being, being a good teacher or a popular rabbi or a good philosopher. We're saying that this man, Jesus, is the cornerstone, the foundation of all that we believe. Amen? That's what we're Jesus-named people. And Peter said there's no salvation in no one else. For there is no other name, other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Peter's echoing what he heard Jesus say just a few weeks before that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me in John 14, 6. This is the gospel. Jesus lived, he died, rose again, and through him we have new life. That's what Christianity is really about. Who Christ is, what Christ has done, and what our response should be. The Christian life is all about Jesus. He is the way, the only way, to a life of spiritual fulfillment. That's the only way. He's a cornerstone of our existence. And yet sometimes we're reluctant to talk about him, aren't we? So he belongs front and center, but we try to tuck him away so that it doesn't offend anybody. And I remember when I, when I first was saved, I was, uh, I was working, for, I was like a, uh, I was like the president of the Life Underwriters for the Pomona Valley. And um, I, I was like, okay, so, and we used to pray, but nobody ever would say, would say the name of Jesus when they prayed. You know, we're going to pray that God, you know, blesses our meeting today. Amen. And I remember saying, thinking, well, you know, am I going to offend him? And I, I remember the, I was working for, for uh, New York Life, and the, the manager was uh, actually like an ex-priest. And he says, no. You just say it what it is. And I remember I, I prayed in, in Jesus' name at those meetings, and I never got squawked at, amen? But I just, I, I, I was, I, again, I, 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 I've, I know what it's talking about here. We're, we're like, I don't want to be offensive, especially now in this, this uh, woke uh, environment that we're in where if, you're, if you say something wrong, they're going to, everybody in the world comes and drops bombs on you. So, again, don't, don't, don't even think about it. You just go ahead and speak the, the name of Jesus. Don't, if it offends somebody, that's their problem, not ours. Amen? We, we're here to do it. That's our job. That's our job, is to, is to preach the gospel. It's our job to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as uncomfortable as it is, um, you, you got to do it. You got to do it. That's the commandment. Amen? When he, when he, when he called his disciples together in and the, and the last chapter of, of uh, Matthew 28, and he tells them, you know, go and make disciples. You know, and then baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ, we all know. That's the commandment that we have, to make disciples, to witness to them. So, today what I, talk about, I want to talk about our, is our message that the world needs to be, both as, as a church and individually. And the message of the early church was unmistakable and bold. That's what they did. They went out there and they were, they were bold. We see that they were definitely martyrs. We saw, we definitely, that, you know, Peter, Stephen, all, they, they were all martyred, murdered for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? So martyr means witness, and in English it's murder. 
So I'm, I'm thinking that maybe, you know, it, it was instead of, that somewhere in the translation, instead of saying martyred, he was martyred. Maybe the Irish said that, huh? Uh, they, were, they, they were martyred. And then we just say murdered, right? So that's, that's what happened. And, and if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes our, our message is unclear and, and cautious. Sometimes we're not as clear as we need to be about what matters most. So today we're going to talk about the message that we're sending out to the world. And I want to talk about how we get sometimes, sometimes get it wrong. I want to talk about how, how it needs to be made right and how we can stay, take a step to make it happen. So the first thing is how we get it wrong. The biggest mistake that as a church can make is, to, is uh, to make following Jesus is about making it something other than following about Jesus. And throughout history, we've been guilty of this. There is a social ideology that's permeating society right now, and now even our churches now. We've had a couple conversations even yesterday um, with some of the folks that were there, some of the, the sisters that were there, and I've had that with other people that I know in other churches, other, other denominations, about who is privileged and who's not, and who's to blame, and who owns whom? It's called social justice, right? And then there's also the, uh, the, um, uh, the critical race theory. That all those things are permeating even our churches where we have pastors saying that, you know what, we need to go ask for forgiveness for these things because of the things that our, the, our people did centuries ago. Or, you know, and wait a minute, it's just, that's not biblical. From here, we need to be speaking Jesus. Amen? About repentance, about salvation. Not to get involved in those kind of things. Who owes what to who? There's only one righteous judge. There's only one way that's going to be through Jesus Christ. So a world is always going to be unjust because it's a place that's full of unjust people. Everyone is unjust. Only God is just. His work is perfect for all his ways are justice in Deuteronomy 32, 4. And he will judge the unjust. How can we survive his righteous judgment? Repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and you'll be saved. For all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but you are justified through great faith in Christ by his grace. Amen? So that's what our message should be, right? It's not about, we're not advocates uh, for that. We're not um, activists for that. We're activists and advocates for the name of Jesus Christ, for salvation in, in Christ, amen? So we have to understand that as a people, a church, we're not political activists. We're not those kind of activists, amen? We are, we are evangelists for Jesus Christ. Amen? He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He gave us his righteousness to follow him. So God is both the justifier of the just and the one who has faith in Jesus. Amen? Romans 3.26. So the message of social justice, you owe me and I deserve to be compensated. The message of the gospel says this, you deserve death, but free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? That's what Jesus, so that's a dichotomy there. The, the worldly way is that way, but scripture says you deserve death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? That's when we understand the text. I know there's politics. Sometimes you can get so involved in the, this party, that party, this party, and, you know, Christians for this. And it's not about that. Again, we're not here to vote people into politics. We're here to go before the Lord and preach the truth, live the truth, and share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't get involved in that stuff. Amen? Yes, there are certain parties that have certain values that we don't agree with, but it's not our job to get people elected. We pray for these people. We pray God has his way. Ultimately, we're going to answer only to him. Amen? Again, so again, just those two things I want to touch on. I know they're, they're, they're touchy, but we got people, what we're here for is for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? It's all about behavior. Many times we fall into the trap of just preaching about sin and sin and sin. What everybody else is doing is wrong and wrong and on and on and on until the world gets impression that being a Christian is nothing more than don't, don't do this, don't doing that. That's all it is. Well, I can't do this, I can't do that. It's more than that. It's more than that. And if you're under the impression that's what Christianity is, we need to pay close attention to the message I'm going to be talking about today. So, does behavior really matter? Absolutely it does. Absolutely. Behavior does matter. Do we need to conf confront sin? Yes, of course we do. But the message of Jesus Christ is not just you are a sinner, which is true, but that's not the gospel. The message of the gospel is this. That Jesus lived and died and rose again. And through him we have new life. Through him our sins are forgiven. That's the message. Amen? Jesus Christ forgives our sin because we're all full of sin. Every one of us is full of sin. But it's only through Jesus Christ that we're going to have salvation and forgiveness of sin. That's our message. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our goal in ministry is not to get bad people to stop doing the bad things. Our goal is to help bad people become godly people. Does that make sense? Amen? Amen? Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm here. 
I'm here. It's, just, it's not me to, to get me to stop doing bad things. It's to get me to become a godly person. Amen? Spiritually seeking God. You know, looking to his word and not that word. Looking to his way and not that way. Resting my, my truth on him instead of that. That's what it is. That's what our, our, our job is. That's what we should be as, as believers. And when I say bad people, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about us. The only way you and me or anyone else can, in this world can be good enough is through the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? So yes, we talk about the behavior. We talk about sin. We talk about what's right and wrong. But let's make it clear that Christianity is not so much about do's and don'ts. It's about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Which brings me to the third way we often mess this up. We, wake the mess, we make the message up too much about church involvement sometimes. We're just, it's program here, program there, program that. It just, you got no life. You know, every day you're here, every day you're that we're doing God's work. Yes, but what about getting out there, making something happen for, for God? Amen? Like, I, I remember just one of the things that Brother Dan, when he first came, he says, we can get so spiritually minded that we're no earthly good. You know, so that, that's it. It's just like you're, that's all you do. You, you don't get out there. You don't, you don't let the salt out of the salt shaker. What good does salt do is if it's on the salt shaker, you got a steak there, a big thing, tomahawk kind of thing, but two inches thick, prime, you know, prime rib, that's whatever it's called. And, and if you don't put a little bit of salt on it, what good is it? It's not going to help out any. you got the steak that you can't eat because it doesn't taste good. We're the salt of the earth, the Bible says. we got to shake the salter. we got to get out there. we got to share the gospel. we got to show how we live. Walk the walk and talk the talk. Amen? That, that's what it's all about. we we got to do that. No matter where we are, what context we're in, we're always going to be different. The Bible calls us... Um, unique amen we are a special people we're children of god so we're always going to have we be the salt of the earth remember that so whenever we hear somebody talk about their spiritual life only on terms of their connection to the church it, it gives you some concern are you hiding in, in in religion are you hiding behind that are you not willing to take a step of faith and go out and share that gospel to actually go amongst the people and, and talk about, you know, this is, what, this is what the Lord did in my life. You know, I, that was, I was going through, but this is how the Lord changed my life. We've got to be that way. We've got to be that way. We've got we to be the living proof of what God has done in our lives. So there's so much more to the Christian life than, than just a couple hours we spend together with each other a week, either on Zoom or here. And if this is all there is to your spiritual, spiritual life, that's not enough. Now, folks, church is, as attendance is good. Believe me, it's vital that we be here. I want you here every time the door is open. But church attendance on its own doesn't save you. Just coming to church doesn't save you. Hearing the word and you walk out of the thing, okay, I feel good now. You know, it's that, no, no, it's, it's more than that. You've got you to gotta put that word to work in your life. You've got to make it part of your DNA. Amen? You can't be just hearers only. You've got to be doers as well. Amen. So only a personal relationship with Jesus Christ can do that. So... Sometimes we mess that message up by talking about do's and don'ts and rules and regulations when we need to be talking about Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? The second thing I want to point out today, we talked about how we got it wrong. We get it wrong. Let's talk about how we need to get it right. Peter said, there is no salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given by men to which we must be saved. If there is salvation, there is no other way through no one else. It means that we need to be talking about Jesus. And I'd like to make three points about First of all, Jesus shows who God really is. He shows what God is like because he himself is God. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. God became man, so he became incarnate. That's the only way he could touch us. That's the only way he could live. He, he, those, the physical things, had develop relationships. As a spirit, he couldn't. There was somebody they would just pray to somewhere out there, wherever you are, God. But no, he came down as a human being, the only begotten son, so that he could walk amongst us. He shows us what God is like because he's God himself. He wasn't a good teacher. He quite literally... Just a good teacher. He was literally God in the flesh. And he said to his followers, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. In John 14, 9, he also said, I and the Father am one. That's exactly what he means, that he is the exact impression of God, the exact image of God. And the, uh, the Greek word is where like, it's stamped. You know, his, it's stamped in this. So that, that is that. That's what Jesus Christ, he's the exact image of God. So if you want to know what God looks like, look at Jesus, because Jesus is God. And many of us have an idea that, that the Father is one and Jesus is the other, but they're both one and the same. Amen? Our understanding of God was limited and inaccurate because uh, it was based on the Old Testament, and that's not enough. Jesus came into the world so we might have a complete picture of who God is. So he walked amongst us. He shared with us, the disciples. He broke bread. He wept. He, he, 
you know, he was baptized. He did all those things. He suffered the, the same things we did as far as it, uh, temptations go. And, you know, the, the loss of this. And the, he grieved just like we did too. And he rejoiced just like we do too. So these parts of the Old Testament may not be easy to understand in the terms of the nature of God, but the Gospels make it clear. In the Gospel, read about that. You know, there's one coming. There's one coming. And then it describes him, how he's going to be... Uh, you know, his face, you know, we, are, we turn our face from him. He's going to be beaten. It describes him. But Jesus Christ in the flesh came in the New Testament when, uh, when he rose again and walked on this earth for 33 years. So our message should be, to the world needs should be this. Do you want to know what kind of God we serve? Look at Jesus. Look at what he said and what he did and how he treated others. He is a perfect example of what God is like. As Paul said he is the image of the invisible God in Colossians 1.15. We need to emphasize that Jesus, that in Jesus, we can see what God is really like. We also need to emphasize that Jesus shows us what love really means. So Jesus is really about love. Now, everybody goes to John 3, 16 and 17, and that's his love for us. He came into this world to save us, not to destroy us. I mean, that's, and and, he, and he, he came as a human being, knowing, knowing that he was going to be sacrificed but he went to the cross. He went, he went the, to the, the full measure of his calling. He came into this world to die on a cross for our sins because he loves each and every one of us. Amen? And he wants us to love him in return and to love one another. Jesus said, as my father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love in John 15, 9. This is my command, John 15, 17. Love each other. But it's hard, Pastor, man. It's hard, man. You know this... Yeah, it is. It is. But if we don't, and we hate him, that's like murder. And murder is a sin. But what do I do, Pastor? What do I do? You've got you to get on your knees before the Lord and say, Lord, change my heart. Change my heart, God. Give me a, a tender heart, Father. Show me. You know, and uh, there's scripture there that if we do not forgive, he's not going to forgive us. He's going to cast us into a dungeon where there's going to be gnashing and, and, and wailing. And so, again, we, we got to think about the, the consequences of us being disobedient to the Lord. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you got to say, you know, this is hard for me, brother or sister. You know, we've had a hard time, and I know it hasn't been good with us. It's been acrimonious at times. But I just, you know, I want to extend you know, an olive branch. Ask, I want to ask for forgiveness and work with me. Work with me. I, I'm working through this. I, I want to get better. You know, when you put somebody on the same playing field with you side by side, you, you work together as a team now. Yeah, brother, you know what? Yes, you did. And you know what? This is what I, we, we need to work this out. And, and maybe you find out that, you know what? It's not what, what you thought he or she said. Maybe it was not how, how he or she, she said it. I think I've told you, when I grew up in, in church, um, it, it was like old school stuff. I mean, you know, it was just, you wore white shirts and you, you, you did, you know, you wore a tie to church every, every day and you went and the, the women sat on the left, I can't remember, but anyway, the, the women would sit on one side, the men would sit on another one. I mean, it, it was like that. I mean, it just, you had to walk the, the line. And I, um, I remember that uh, my, my dad was pastoring a church, and uh, the congregation got rid of him. They went to the bishop, and they told a bunch of stuff about him. So we had to leave. And I grew up hating them for what they did. I did. I grew up hating them. I mean, I was I'd gone to the army, everything. Even when I, after, after I got saved, um, and he's, uh, I remember I told my dad, I said, what about this family? That oh, man, we had a big barbecue meal. We had them all over, and everything's right. I'm going, why didn't you tell me that? I've been harboring all this hatred for these people for all these years. So that can, that can happen. You know, you've you got to let it out. Otherwise, you're going to be bitter for your life. You're going to go around for 39 years bitter and turning your back on God because of what something happened, what somebody said, and it wasn't even all about that. Amen? Your salvation depends on your having an open heart to the Lord, being, having a forgiving heart to the Lord. Amen? Love each other. As hard as it is, we love each other. So our message to the world needs to be that we take love seriously because our Lord takes love seriously. In the same way that he's shown his love for us, we seek to show others his love as well. And the third thing we need to emphasize is Jesus shows us that life, what life can truly be like. When Peter said that salvation is found in no one else. He's not just talking about going to heaven instead of hell when you die. He's talking about salvation in this life. He was talking about a crippled man who had just been healed by the power of Jesus Christ, just as a broken life can be healed through his power. Man, Brother Kenny just got up and told us. 
broken. He was broken. He was broken. And the Lord had mercy and came back another time and rescued him. And he's here today. There's so many of us like that too. We've been that way. We've, we've been dragged through the mud most of our life. We've, been, we've come and we tried and we failed and we tried and we failed. But he's never given up on us. He takes a broken life and makes you whole. Amen. That should be enough for you to say praise God. Amen. Thank God. And some of us haven't been there yet. Amen? Maybe that's not happened to us yet, and maybe it won't. Praise God that it won't. But if it does, remember, there's a God who of mercy, a God who loves you, a God who's going to forgive you even in the middle of the difficult, the darkest hours that you might be going through. That's the kind of love that he has for us. He wants to take a broken life and heal it through his power. Jesus said, I have come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly in John 10, 10. An abundant life is what his plan was for us, is what his plan is for us. He wants us to have a, 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 an abundant, a prosperous life. He also said, these things I have spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full, in John 15, 11. A joyful life. Amen? Jesus came that we might experience life as it should be experienced. Not a life destroyed by sin, but a life redeemed and made right by his mercy and grace and his power. Amen? That's what we look like. Every one of us was touched by sin. Every one of us had that stain, that stain that stunk in our lives. It would wake us up at night. We couldn't live with ourselves. We were angry. We were always bitter because, you know, you can't get rid of this stuff. I can't get rid of this stuff. It just seems like every time I try to, it gets stronger and stronger. But then the life of redemption when God comes and heals us and delivers us from that sin and that pain and cleanses us from all unrighteousness and he sets us free. Amen. That's the kind of love that Jesus Christ has. And that's the kind of what I'm talking about. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. So again, Jesus came so we might experience life as it should be experienced. Not a life destroyed by sin, but a life redeemed and made right by his mercy and his grace. And only Jesus can do it no matter what your life, what way is, but, in a, but what, it truly, what it's truly meant to be. The gospel is not politics and religion and all the do's and don'ts. The gospel is that Jesus lived and died and rose again, and only through him, only through him, can you and I experience new life. Yeah. So how do we get there? Number three. Our message to the world needs to be about Jesus, that only he can make the difference in your life and my life. You and I cannot make a mark on this world until God has made a mark on you, sealed you with the Holy Spirit of God, sealed you with the Holy Spirit of God. When, uh, that, when, uh, that second time, when I went up to that men's camp, it was up in Big Bear, and I can't remember, and it was a, you know, it was a men's, it was a men's summer camp, and I remember walking up, to, I probably told you a story, but anyway, I, I remember walking up, my brother Rick told me I was going to go, I, I didn't have an option, he says, my brother, uh, we're going to go. So I'm walking up there, and they're sitting on like a, like a stone uh, uh, wall was this man, gentleman, his name was Alex um, Lopez. He was, a, he was a, a, like the tractor guy at the school. I remember he used to mold on him and his brother. I didn't know they were Christian. Actually, I think they, they got saved after that, after I, I left. But I remember I walk up, and he's sitting there. My nickname is Tito, all right, so it's Vicentito. That's, that's what they call me, Tito. So he says, Tito. Um, he said this in Spanish. He said, I, I congratulate you on your baptism. I go, thank you, Brother Alex. He goes, ¿Estás sellado? Have you been sealed? I'm going, what do you mean, have you been sealed? Have you received the gift of the Holy Spirit? I'm like, no. He said, oh, you know what? I said, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So that, that was a night when we went to this room, probably half the size of this, like I don't know how many of us were in there, and the power of the Holy Spirit came. And I don't know, they didn't preach that night. I, I just, I remember... Not much, but I just, I was someplace else. And it was the most awesome, most beautiful, most powerful, most wonderful thing I ever experienced in my life. And that's the seal. That's the seal. That's the mark. When you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, you've been marked by the Holy Spirit of God. You're a child of God, full of the Holy Spirit. So you and I cannot make a mark on this world until God has made a mark on you. This church cannot make a mark in this community until God has made his mark on his church. Amen. What this means, we need to be more than anything else, we need to be more about Jesus. Today I want to give you one practical way to move in that direction. This week, I encourage you to read one of the Gospels. Now the Gospels are the first, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're like the first four books of the, uh, the New Testament. 
and, and read from there from start to finish. Some are shorter than the other. Might, one might take, it might take a couple hours, maybe an hour and a half to read it. So draw, don't try to, try to do a, a, a steep study, a deep study on that. Just read the stories and see what they tell you about Jesus and see what they tell you about God. My prayer is that this simple reading of one of the Gospels take maybe less than three hours if you do start it to finish. But my prayer is that this simple reading of this Gospel will kindle, will kindle or rekindle. You know what kindling a flame, a flame is, right? Uh, it's where you take a bunch of little scraps, maybe take a little bit of leaves and grass and you, you strike it, you strike it and you get a, a spark going in there and it lights up. That it will spark or re-spark a fire in your soul. A desire to know Jesus personally and to make your Christian life all about Him. Read the stories. Read the stories about how He traveled and how He talked and how He dealt with people. The miracles and how He wept and how He loved and how He suffered and how He hung on a cross for you and for me and He shed His blood. So read those stories and, and make it real in your life. Amen? To where you dream about it. I was telling Linda, you know, I, I've had trouble sleeping. I said, I, I, I miss dreaming. I, I, I want to dream those dreams again. You know, where, where I have the, God gives you those messages in the dreams, amen? He gives you messages in dreams, and you wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning, and it's just like, and then if you're not, if you don't wake up all the way and write that scripture down, and you think, okay, I'll come back later and get it, you'll forget it. <laughs> so, so get up. When, he, when God wakes up at 3, write it down. Whatever the prayer is, whatever he gives you, write it down. There is no other name under heaven that has been given to men by which we must be saved. So let's make sure that our message and our mission is all about Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? That's my sermon. Make it all about Jesus. Make it all about Jesus. Help him make that mark on you so that you can make a mark on others too. Amen? Let's not get, let's not, I know there's a lot of bad things happening out there. There's a lot of crazy things on there. Pray for that, but focus on Christ. Pray for them. Focus on Christ. Pray for those needs. Pray for those countries, but focus on Christ. Amen? Lord, help me. Help me to make this real in my life. Help me, Lord. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, ask for it. Just, Lord, just baptize me with the gift of the Holy Spirit. And maybe, maybe now, maybe that it might just be flickering a little bit. Yeah, it's in there. Fan the flame. Fan the flame. Amen? Fan the flames where it burns bright again. And you, you get up with that desire now to preach and to teach and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen? Praise God. Let's stand. So today I'm just asking, the altar is open. Amen? We're not picking anybody. It's like, you know, if I go up there, they're going to think this. We think that anyway. <laughs> you know, make it, make, make, make it a priority. Come to the altar. Just come to the altar. Lord, touch me today. You know, it's, it doesn't mean that you're weak in your faith. It doesn't mean that you haven't been reading the scriptures. It just means that, you know, I, I, I want a touch of God today. And if there's a sickness and you need healing, ask God, you know, to, to, so that we anoint you with oil and there's healing. You know, if there's questions in your heart, Lord, reveal them to me. And, and, we, and you know, again, Brother Dan and I are available for a Bible study. I know we do them on Wednesday nights. We cover the sermon. You know, but if you have something else, text us. You know, say, what does this mean? What does that mean? I'm, this, text us and let us, you know, let us get together with you. And if you need to have a Bible study in your home, well, go there. Don't, don't just, it's not just Wednesdays. It's not just Sundays. Any other day, too, we can do something. We can, we can share the God. Monday nights, we have prayer. So Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, Saturday. I mean, come on. Any one of those days will work. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise God. So the altar is open. I know it's warm in here, isn't it? Or is it just me? Praise God. Thank you.